What's going on guys, I'm Jason Park. I'm a feature filmmaker and today I wanted to talk to you guys about why I decided to sell my red cinema camera and buy the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K full frame and what it means as a filmmaker. I'm gonna show you some clips right off the bat of the red in action. Stay in the car. Don't get out. Okay, go. Always asking for stuff. Never has any fucking money. Monster for my bitch. And then I'm gonna show you some clips of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, right? I've used both of these cameras extensively for my films. So here you go. Sandra! Get up on the couch! Ross, grab the peroxide and gauze from the cabinet. Got it. Hurry up! Shit. Hurry up! Where the fuck out of bed? Come on, Ross! They're about the microwave! Come on, let's go! been hallucinating for the past 20 minutes. We have to stabilize him. I'm a soldier, baby. Hey, grab the alcohol, I'm a Ross. On it. Come on, man. Hurry up. Hey. Oh, yeah, we stopped him. Yo, 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 you were in hold that on, movie? Hold on, they're still talking and shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you, hey, come here. Hang over there. He talking to you. He ain't come talking here. to me. Fuck that. Oh, me? Come here for a second. Oh, him. Hell, he talking to you, bro. <laughs> yeah, <girl>. you. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. I want to tell you something. Go. What's up, cuz? What you want, slut? <laughs> now, the image quality in the red Komodo is absolutely especially when you talk about post-production, is absolutely better to get that cinema high quality look than the Blackmagic system, including the Ursa cameras. In post, the red raw codec is absolutely better. So as a filmmaker, right, I've shot four films and I'm about to go into uh, production on my fifth film. You probably think, okay, well, why would you sell the red? So I'm just going to backtrack a little bit to kind of explain the journey. My first three films, uh, Rex Park, Curse of the Golden Buddha. The film is not good by any means, but it was our film school and we learned so much from that film. Uh, Four Amigos, which is our second film that has international distribution and all that stuff. But I just released it uh, kind of like a director's cut called Fast Atlanta on YouTube, which is uh, that film just recalibrated with new music and, and new sequencing. Uh, our third film, Pizza Boy Rick, that's coming out this year. That's a local Atlanta distributor. Uh, I personally know somebody that works with that distributor. So I was like, sure, you guys can you know distribute the film for two years. But those three films were all shot on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, the original version. Not the Generation 2, not the Pro, but the original version. And that's the clips that you saw earlier. As a filmmaker, I wanted to up the quality. So I said, hey, I'm gonna sell all my gear and I'm going to purchase the red Komodo. So I sold everything, I purchased the red Komodo and the red Komodo is what I used for my fourth film, Always Smile, that's currently being submitted to all of the, the top big film festivals. Now, mind you, up until this point, it's been black magic and it's been red. And in post-production, the red is an absolute dream to work with, right? You can push the colors so far before they start breaking and looking crazy. You can get that image that you want with very little tweaks using Red Raw and IPP2. Like it's, 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 it's really mind blowing, right? So you may be asking yourself, 
okay, well, why would you sell the red? And as an indie filmmaker, you don't have the luxuries of, I have a focus puller, I have a sound guy, I have a light guy, I have an assistant. You don't have those luxuries. A lot of times you're a one man band and you're wearing so many hats. So what becomes very valuable to you on, on set, right, is convenience. And I was willing to give up that little extra quality in picture quality for all the conveniences that the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K full frame offers, right? And you may be asking, okay, well, what are those conveniences? First of all, I know it's controversial because everyone's like, hey, Blackmagic, make a cube camera. And then they go and make the Pixis and then there's controversy, myself included, because the, the um, monitor's on the side. I personally do not like the cube camera. Uh, for my shooting style, the Blackmagic is, is, is perfect, right? The pocket line, the cinema camera is perfect because I have a built-in monitor. So now, with the red, I had to have an external monitor, I had to have SDI connections, and then I had an SDI protector, and then you have to do the, the SDI protocol so you don't blow your SDI ports, right? You do last in, first out, right? So that alone annoyed me to whatnot about having to rig that up and just having these additional items. I like to keep it lean and mean when I shoot. So having that built-in monitor for me was a big deal. Now, uh, with the audio selection of having, even if it's a smaller XLR, but that built-in phantom power to me was like, okay, that's another plus, right? The only thing that the red had was that image quality. Fortunately, Blackmagic, Pocket Cinema Camera, Ursa's, all that stuff, they have B-Raw, which is absolutely a lifesaver because sometimes when you're shooting really fast and you're shooting eight scenes in four hours, you make mistakes while shooting that you later correct in post, right? Um, so that convenience factor, that form factor of the cinema camera is why I purchased it. Because I literally can go, set it up, put the battery in, add my lens, and start shooting. Just like that. Put the CFast Type B in there and go. With the Komodo, you have to have your cage, your monitor, your SDI cables, of course you got your memory, you got your lens, uh, you have your handle, you, like you have all these other little things that you just have to rig out. And then what starts off as a small box, which is great for people that like to build out their cameras, right? To, they like to have these big things. For me, after doing four films, you're talking about pre-production, production, post-production, post -production, and completing four feature films, I do not like to rig out my gear. The less that I have to do, the better. Because as long as your lighting's right, as long as your sound's good, the, the, the picture quality is negligible to the average audience. We're not talking about people like us that are in film that we look at anything, we look at the dynamic range, we look at the colors, we're like, wow, that looks mushy, oh, that looks really good. Oh, you know, I wanna use this lens because it has, you know, vintage characteristics of having warping distortion in the background uh, and not being clinically sharp, right? Everyone has their own taste. But what I found when, when you go through this process of making films, man, the, the, the quality that you get, as long as the lighting's right, is, is so negligible that no one's gonna notice it. And here's another thing that people don't tell you, right? When that film, unless it's a film that Amazon purchased or Netflix purchased and they're, they're displaying it to the world, most indie filmmakers, if their film ends up on Amazon Prime or it ends up on Tubi or any of these other channels, the audience is consuming that film in 720p or maybe 1080p, right? So that means whether you're shooting on an FX3 or anything like that, you're shooting in 4K, 6K, and it's all being funneled down to 1080p or 720p. So the extra stuff, the extra dynamic range, no one is sitting there. I've never once watched a film and looked at it and if something like the actor is acting in the center of frame, I've never looked at the side of the frame to just look at the shadows 
I've, I've never done that. Now, I've noticed when, you know, they're by a window and the, the highlights are blown out, right? Um, but it's never stopped me from enjoying the film, especially if it's a good story. So that's just one of those things where that convenience factor alone is why I purchased the Blackmagic camera. And you can absolutely shoot feature films that look good and sound good with that camera. And that's why I decided to go back to Blackmagic and use that for my fifth film, which we're currently working on called Rhino King. Let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear and interact with you guys and let me know what you guys want to hear about next. Um, if you guys want, to, want me to give insight on the pre-production, production, how to do this, how to do that, you know, let me know and I'll be more than happy to uh, make that content for you and help um, uh, teach you guys how to be better filmmakers with the, the, the knowledge that I have and you can build upon that and become even greater. So I'm Jason Park. This is Hypertude. See you later.